What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Tony Mac. Return of the Mac. What's happening? How y'all doing? I'd like to say thank you to every one of y'all that's been liking, sharing, subscribing to my videos. I appreciate y'all because I am a small YouTuber. And the only way us, for us to grow is for y'all to let them know. And y'all been doing a great job of that, sending your likes and your love. I do appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now that that's out the way, i like to talk to y'all about some boxing news, man. We got a lot of news for y'all. We got the Terrence Crawford and the Errol Spence Jr. fight to talk about. We got to talk about the Caleb Plant. Plant one across Jamal's Charlo's face. We definitely got to talk about that. Also, footage of the Javante Davis domestic violence situation, right? Remember everybody thought he was hitting on that lady? I wonder what folks going to say when we find out that there's footage or what people saying now that the footage has been, been released that Javante is innocent. I wonder what everybody's gonna say about that, y'all. But first things first, we gotta talk about something. Caleb Plant. Caleb Plant, man, former uh, middleweight champion, slapped the dogs out of Jamal Charlo. Now, I don't know what started. I didn't see the, the early part of the altercation. I didn't see what happened. All I saw was a slap. Security breaking it up. Uh, Jamar Charlo's camp trying to get out to Kalen Plant. Kalen Plant walked off smooth like a gangster. The only thing got me wondering, win the fight. Win the fight. Because now I got to see this. I got to see it. Now, look, we all know Jamar Charlo had to take time off. He was dealing with mental uh, mental stress. He was dealing with, with, with you know, with his emotion, stuff like that. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. He was dealing with battling depression. You know what I mean? He was battling depression, so he missed like a year and a half in boxing. So I don't think Caleb Plant need to be the first boxer he need to get in the ring with. We know Jamal Charlo was a beast. Jamal Charlo was a beast, undefeated. Everybody they put in front of him, he embarrassed and knocked them out. Everybody. He is a beast. However, a year and a half layoff, he need a tune-up fight. He need to get some Joe Smo ranked top 40 that. Looking to get a nice little payday, put him in the ring, let Jamar Charlo whoop him down. And then his next fight, got to be Caleb Plant. Y'all got some unresolved issues, and I like to see y'all get it on. And then people up there, oh man, I know he ain't going to let that white boy slap him. I know he ain't going to let that white boy slap him. First of all, Caleb Plant is not white. He's light-skinned. He has a black wife. He has tattoos. He listens to hip-hop, and he hang with black people. As far as I'm concerned, Caleb Plant right now is light-skinned. He's no longer white. We're taking him, and we're getting rid of... Who are we going to get rid of to trade off for Caleb Plant? Who are we going to trade off? We'll find out later. But Caleb Plant one of us now. He's with us now, man. Matter of fact, you know what? Timothy Bradley, we're going to kick your ass out. Y'all can have Timothy Bradley give us Caleb Plant. You know why I say that, Timothy Bradley? Because you was up in there in that media talking all that shit about Javante Davis, and you were saying how I hope Ryan Davis beat his ass. I hope, um, uh, not Ryan Davis, Ryan Garcia. Ryan Davis, the comedian. He must be talking about me. You know what I'm saying? That's what we say out here in the South. When some, you mess up and say somebody's name, you're like, oh, he must be talking about me. Nigga, Ryan Davis don't even know you exist, nigga. Anyway, when Ryan Garcia and Tank Davis was fighting, Timothy Bradley, you said you hope Ryan Garcia beat Tank Davis because you say he's a woman beater, you don't respect him, and all that negative shit you said about him. How do you feel now knowing that Javante Davis ain't never hit that woman? Do you recant your statements? If you're going to get your ass up there on Showtime Boxing or HBO, whoever the fuck you work for, and get up there and say, hey, I was wrong about Javante. I'm sorry. I should have said that. We Now we need to go out here and wait till the evidence is out until somebody's actually convicted before we open our goddamn mouths. No, you went out there like a Captain Saver ho with your fucking cape on and rushed out there to go against your own people. That's why we kicking your ass out. You used to always go against Floyd Mayweather too, nigga. Your bald-headed ass used to always go against Floyd Mayweather Jr. too. So we booping your ass out, Timothy Bradley. Straight up. The fuck on, nigga. Get the fuck on. We don't want you. We don't want you. Back to what I was saying. Caleb Plant, we ain't got no beef with you, man. We know you're nice with them skills. You only got one loss against Canelo Alvarez, a motherfucking future Hall of Famer. We all know Nello, another white boy. I don't give a fuck what you Mexicans say. Canelo white. Canelo is white. He's a white Mexican. There it is. Ha! Y'all thought I was about to say some foolish, man. Canelo's Mexican. Anyway, you lost your only losses to a future goddamn Hall of Famer whose only loss is to the greatest boxer of all time, Floyd Mayweather Jr. So we know Caleb Plant is for real with it in the ring. 
But Jamal Charlo, you get that tune-up fight, you and Caleb Plant, y'all got to get it on. Don't bring it to the streets. Don't bring it to the fucking courts. Don't bring it to my posse going to handle his posse. None of that shit. Get up in there and get that contract signed. And for everybody, y'all know we want to see it. So all you dirty-ass boxing promoters, go ahead on and cut the check. Cut the check because you know we want to see it. That's why we can't see the best fight. The goddamn Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Manny Pacquiao fight got pushed all 20 goddamn years because all the promoters want to be greedy. Bob Arum them. Y'all want to be goddamn greedy. Y'all want to blame it. Oh, Floyd scared of Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao scared of Floyd. Ain't none of them men scared of each other. They fucking fighters. They fighters. Ain't no fighter scared of no other fighter. They want to get it on with each other. They can't even hang together too long because there's something going to jump on. It's these goddamn greedy promoters that keep pushing this shit away from us seeing it. Not want to get a fighter what they deserve. Oh, no, nah, this ain't good to fight this year. Y'all need to just go back and forth on Twitter for three years, and then we'll go ahead on and sell a fight. Man, fuck that. That's why I'm proud of Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Bud Crawford. They've been calling each other out for years. They've been trying to make that shit happen for years, and now it's happening. And neither one of them, yeah, we know Bud Crawford's a little older, but he ain't super-duper older than, Ter than uh, Errol Spence Jr. Excuse me, y'all. They are, this still a close fight. You know what I'm saying? Shit, hell, Bud might, what, 34, 35, but Bud don't smoke, don't drink, don't do nothing but risk. Go home to his family. That's a good dude. Solid dude. Take care of his body. So, shit, Bud really like 23 in his body wise. Nigga, that nigga don't smoke a drink. So, 34-year-old that don't smoke a drink, you really like 23. And then look at, uh, and Errol Spence, nigga, everybody know Errol Spence party, nigga. Everybody know Errol Spence gonna live it up, nigga. That nigga is perfect to be the champion. He is perfect to be the face of boxing, bro. Errol Spence got, got drip. That motherfucker got the ladies want him. The niggas won't be like him. He got the hood love. He got the corporate America love. He got the right look. And in the ring, the boy just look like it just, it looks smooth when you see Errol, like uh, Errol Spence box, man. That nigga look nice with it. And I'm proud of them brothers for getting it on. And guess what? I'm also proud of them. You know what they did at the weigh-in? They shook hands. They let them know, man, this ain't personal. This is a quest to see who is the best out of me and you. I'm not about to talk bad about you and your family. You, you ain't going to talk bad about me and my family, man. We just going in here to prove who the best. Now, I want to kill you when I get in the ring. But if we walk away and survive, let's still be respectful. Or at least be cool. Let's still be cool. Or at least be respectful. I respect that. I respect that. Salute to them brothers for that, man. Salute to them brothers for that, man. So... What is my predictions for the fight? Even before I throw the predictions out, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I'm gonna tell y'all, I'm rooting for Bud Croft. I'm look, I'm rooting for Bud, man. Nothing against Errol Spence. Every other fight Errol Spence Jr. has ever been in, I rooted for him. You know what I'm saying? Homie representing Dallas. I moved out to the Dallas, what, 12, 13 years ago. So, you know, it ain't my hometown, but it's still my second hometown, you dig? So I'm always rooting with Errol Spence. I like the kid. I'm rooting for him. Not this fight, though, but usually all these other fights, I'm rooting for them because I like them, you know what I'm saying? But this fight, I got to go for the underdog, man. All the boxing experts, all the boxers, everybody in the box community talking about how Terrence Bud Crawford pretty much ain't got a chance. Are they saying how, this, how Spence got a real iron shield, but Terrence Crawford got a glass shield and all that shit? Well, I'm rooting for the underdog. That's all I'm, that's my only reason. Nothing against you, Arrow. Nothing against you, Elod. I'm just rooting. I'm just rooting for the underdog because I know what it's like to be the underdog in life. It had the whole world against you, and then to come up from out of that thing, come up out the ashes like a phoenix. You know what I'm saying? So I'm proud. I want Bud to win, but if he lose, let it be a great fight. And I'm and if and if Errol Spence is the victor, I'm happy for him. I'm happy for that kid, man. He survived that that. Ooh. Excruciating car wreck, man. If y'all ever saw that video, bro, that that's I ain't mean to bring it on the somber note, but for this brother to be back, he didn't just get back to boxing and be a bum. This brother got back to boxing and fought all the way to the top. So you gotta be proud of Errol Spence Jr. You gotta be. You know what I'm saying? But I gotta root for my nigga Bud, man. He he been the underdog his whole career. This fight right here is gonna remove doubt from out of everybody's mind about Terrence Bud Crawford. This fight right here is going to make sure everybody finally give Terrence Bud Crawford his due goddamn respect. 
because I'm tired of people making excuses. Oh, he fought Porter when he was old. Oh, he just fighting one dude because he had a bad knee. Oh, he beat this one because he was that. The only respect for when he got his gamboa. Man, look, the man can only fight who in the ring with him. It's not his fault he making them look like they don't belong in the ring with him. That's not his fault. So my predictions for this fight, I'm going to give y'all two of them. If it go to distance, it's going to Errol Spence. If it go to distance, it's going to Errol Spence. It makes more sense. If it's a close fight, I feel like Errol Spence know how to keep it a close fight. We seen that with, the, like we said, Sean Porter. Sean Porter made it a dog match for Errol Spence. That was the first dog match I've ever seen him in. But Errol made it a, a nice boxing match, and he beat him technically, beat him solidly. Went to the judges. It was no way you could have gave that fight to Sean Porter. It was no way. Errol Spence just looked too good in the ring. He took some punishment, and he won. Then who he go up against Ugas the next fight and just brutalized that dude. Just, oh, I don't talk about that. Just whooped him, you know. But Bud different. Bud different. I'm going to let you know now, if y'all miss the fight and y'all see KO, it's going to be done by Terrence Bud Crawford. Y'all heard it from Tony Mack first. So I feel Arrow win. It's going to be a 12-round decision. But if Bud win... Eight round knockout over. Y'all heard it from Tony Mack first, man, on this channel where we keep it all the way real. But as always, love. Peace.